This is Ed Dollister. And this is Mitch Halleck. And welcome to episode three of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. Thank you so much for joining us on the past two episodes. We've been thrilled with all the views and also the comments and all the mm -hmm. subscribers to our Facebook page as well. So thank you. Glad you're enjoying what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I love the comments too. And we answer those, believe it or not. I saw a couple and I said, oh, it's, it's, it's feedback. So, you know, it was cool. And it wasn't negative feedback. Well, no. the guy that said, we have messy basements. I'm like, hey, man, right. it's a set. It's, 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 you know, it's to evoke. I don't know what it's supposed to evoke, but it's, it's, it's clutter. It's, it's part of the we, show. We would lo we'd love our viewers to go, wouldn't it be awesome to look around in their basement or study? That's what I think. That's exactly what it is. That's, I mean, you know what? If we did turn the camera around, I think people would be impressed or they'd call the local authorities one or the other. But well, it it's funny. If we, if we turn the camera around, I would be seeing a whole slew of um, movie posters. And that's what our topic of the day is for this episode, our favorite movie posters. Yeah, correct. What I'm going to say, even as a kid, when I'd go to the movies, that was always the best part. You'd walk down these long hallways into the theater and they would be lined with movie posters. Sometimes movies of coming attractions, like what's coming soon or movies that were classic. And I always remember that. And I would just go down the hallway and look at all the different, you know, styles and titles and all that. And just, you know, just tell by the poster what movie I wanted to go see because they didn't always have YouTube. We didn't have trailers on our phone or anything like that where we could just watch it. You just it had was, to see an image. Oh my gosh, it was the first time you'd go and go, oh my gosh, there's a new, there's a new movie coming out of this or that yeah. or whatever. And um, it was really, it was really a, a graphic image. I mean, it had to get your attention like that. So you'd remember like, I want to go see that movie because I saw this picture in the hallway. You didn't know what it was about, but if it was such a good graphic, you it would, you know, you'd remember it, you know. That's how I used to be anyway. Oh, absolutely. And and what I really loved and you can see from around us the the yeah. artwork that's surrounding us, these are these are art it's artwork really. Oh yeah, it? absolutely. It's not just it's yeah. not advertising. Um and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about um uh you know how today it's all photoshopped images and i think there's a time and a place for images for posters because we're going to talk about our favorite movie posters i know one or two of mine have got our photos you know mm -hmm. but it's a it's a bit of a shame it is a little bit of a lost art now um well not it's not a lost art because there's still some no, fantastic no, you know Paul shipper yeah. and mark rats and all these amazing artists are still um, creating this artwork, it's just, it seems like the uh, movie studios are resisting putting up hand-drawn yeah, art. When I went to school, I was going to school, I originally wanted to be a comic book artist, but then I shifted into graphic design, and then I started looking at all these movie posters, and really, it was the Star Wars fan club, uh, mm -hmm. where you used to be part of that in the 70s, and you could send away and get actual movie posters because if you ever read the fine print on the movie posters really i don't know how it is in australia but it says for promotional purposes only mm -hmm. theater owners must destroy these materials once the movie's out of circulation or something like that so you're not supposed to have these things when it years ago the big movie posters because they were just meant to promote the film they were properties of the studios really yes. it was kind of like the film reels that you can't just go home there was no vhs's there was no iphone movies or anything like that these were ads basically for the movies and the only people that ever had them were the folks that worked in the theater because instead yes. of throwing them in the trash can they would roll them up and take them home and uh so I wanted that job when I, when I first was being a comic book artist and then I saw the artwork and it, we're going to talk about some of the people here too, but Richard Amzell, who's mm -hmm. Raiders posters, you're going to, we're going to talk about that guy. I'd see his name and the, the stylized way he had written his name, a M and a big S and the E L. Yes. I would look for his artwork. And then there was a magazine here in the States called the TV guide. Mm -hmm. And that would have all the listings of all the television programs and such. And occasionally he would do the cover art and he was a brilliant illustrator and a painter. So you would see, you know, Lucio Ball, Bob Hope, Johnny Carson, all these classic right. portraits. And I was like, that's that guy with the name, with the ASL. Cause it was, you know, it would ring a bell and it was just fantastic. Uh, and like you said, there was no Photoshop. Mm. 
in the 80s and in you know 70s maybe towards the end of the 80s so i went to school to learn to be an illustrator and then photoshop had to come along and around 87 88 and i remember one of our professors talking to us about it and said hey guys this is going to kill the illustration business because the reason why the studios went towards that it's cheaper mm -hmm. it's faster you didn't have to expend money on an expensive artist to come up with a design you would just take a photograph of the actor and slap it onto a you know big graphic and put the name and you can start to see the progression in the 80s when it started stepping away from illustrated posters and started mm -hmm. going more to that photo realistic to nowadays where other than like you mentioned mark rats and you'll occasionally get some by uh, drew struzan who came out of a retirement here and there a lot of them are just manipulated in photoshop they'll even have filters that make it look like it was you know painted with a, a paintbrush yes, yes. or but it's not it's really just the photograph and you can find the reference photos and you're like hey wait a minute this is the picture where that guy took that from and all he did was change the light source or something so it, it is a bit of a lost art there's still some guys that can still do it but on the whole, I'd say 80%, 90% are done in Photoshop. And, and I suppose I get it. You know, I can understand that. But I think for some, some sort of films, like for a, potentially, a, you know, a rom-com or a, yeah. look, an Adam Sandler movie or something like that, ugh, um, I think, uh, you know, fair enough. But yeah, for yeah. a big rollicking adventure or like, that's, that's why I feel like with... Um, we see we're off, sort of off on we're off topic already. a bit but, but yeah, yeah yeah but you know like for the why for the last um for the the, the you know the rise of skywalker and all that yeah i'm yeah. sure mr struzan who we've had on, as a guest on our show yes, a guest yeah, number yeah. Uh, he was on episode 250 of the indie cast um mm -hmm. you know He's a rock star amongst, yeah. uh, you know, he's the John Williams of movie poster, you know, yeah. um, artists. Uh, it's a, it, it's, I don't know why they didn't use him for, you know, the last. Well, the last it, it could be, a, it, I, th I think he actually said, I don't know if I can't remember if they didn't, they asked him or they didn't ask him or whatever. Cause I know he did a graphic for a D23, which is the uh, Disney yes. fan uh, convention uh, in August. And they came out with a graphic for, I'm going to say Force Awakens, was it? Uh, and it, it could was, have it been, was or was Kylo. it? Yeah. I don't think it was Last Jedi. I think it I'll was put, that I'll one. put up an image. Yeah, but that was the last time I think he did any of the Star Wars. Now, he did all the prequel posters. And then when they did the special editions in the mid-90s, yes. he did all those as well. Yep. And so it was really, I was hoping he was going to do all the new sequels, The Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and Rise of Skywalker, because it's an OCD thing. It's a completist. You want to oh, have yes. them all lined up. And I have all my, uh, the walls here and the, whatever you want to call this place, the man cave, all my favorite movies. And then I would rotate them out and have themes. And at one point, when the uh, prequels were out, I had all the Star Wars special editions, four, five, and six. And then we had one, two, and three, and it, it just felt cool. You know, you yep. walk downstairs, you go, look at that. It's a, a whole six-movie epic saga, and there's Drew Struzan, and he's the common thread. Just like John Williams, like you mentioned, you know, he brings it all together. Yep. And it, thank God with the Indiana Jones movies, it started with Temple of Doom. He did The Last Crusade, and when they did The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, he did one of the advanced posters, and then... He did another version, but mm. it, it, it kept that continuity. Yeah. And then, in fact, they liked him so much that when they did the Indiana Jones paperback novels that are over there, yep. he was the artist for all that. And Harrison Ford really liked Drew Struzan because he said, oh, you're the guy, because he knew the way Harrison Ford would look, and he always had the features. Because Harrison Ford's got a very unique face. He's got, like, the crooked nose. That's and right, the scar. It's a yep. little asymmetric face. It's not, you know perfect hollywood stuff and uh, he just nails it every time you see an indiana jones image and it's drew struzan oh it's, it's like a, it's a dead ringer yeah. he's, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's amazing in fact i'm looking at the indiana jones adventure for temple of the forbidden eye from yes. disneyland it's right over there and uh that's that's it it's a drew struzan harrison ford poster it's hanging up right over there in front of me well, but anyway, we digress. Yeah, let's let, go that's okay. I was going to say let's let's talk um, our favorite. Um, so um, we uh, have got our top three 
favorite film it's again this is really hard to do because there's yeah. so many favorites and i'm surrounded again by posters on my walls you know that's obviously yep. a good indicator that you like the artwork but um we couldn't we we didn't want this to be a three hour. We're going to try and make this we, a 25 could. minute. In fact, yeah. we're, oh my gosh. We're, we're already fit. We're I know. Done. We're, you know what? We could always come back. Maybe we'll do genres next time. We'll do this or that. But today's the first yeah. pitch. We're going to tell you what our three favorite movie posters are. And we've are got some runners time. up as well. So um, my, I'll, I'll go first if that's okay. So my go favorite, ahead. and yeah. I've got a feeling it's your favorite as well because um, it's sitting right behind you, is the fantastic Richard Amsel reissue of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, yeah. I, while I love the original uh, poster, um, which, was, I, which I actually remember from the novelization, um, the, yeah. uh, was it Campbell Black? Did Campbell the, Black did it. There was two covers. Yes. He did the second cover. I mean, th this image is on the second version of the novelization. That's right, because like Starenko was on the, wasn't he on the cover? Stur no, I, it, it's over there. If I had known we were going to do this, I'd go That's grab right. it. Mine's, well, mine's is, here. No, the one I have, the original Raiders of the Lost Ark movie novelization is a photograph of Harrison Ford and Karen Allen from the Raven Bar, where she has him by the lapels and she's pulling him in to kiss him. Really? That's what's okay. on the cover of my book and then when the movie came out it was a hit they did a second printing and they changed it to the richard amzell movie poster and, and i know that it had the sh it had the it shiny had a foil, yeah yes. foil cover they call it it was a a shiny blue yes or shiny red yep and i think there was a shiny green and yes. I, I remember there's three versions of that book and back in the day when they couldn't sell the novels what they would do is they would rip the covers off the books and they would send the covers back to the publisher and they'd get credit for it. They'd say, Hey, we ordered, you know, 25 copies of this book. We only sold 12. We want our money back. And the thing is they'd have to destroy the book. So they would then take the books and then sell them for like a quarter or a nickel. And cause I remember there'd be bins of uh, books with out covers on them and they were like five cents, but the book was still there. And I remember I was so mad because they had torn the cover mm -hmm. off of Raiders Lost Ark. I'm like, that was the best part of that book was the cover <laughs> of the artwork, you know, but I yeah, did. I, I, that's the first post. I did read that book over and over and over. And um, there is something about Richard Amsel's um, artwork that yeah. is, it's stylized, but it's, it gets to the heart and the soul of the, every character yeah, that yeah. whatever the film is. Um, I know a good friend of our, we, of, from the indie cast um adam mcdaniel's adam. working on yeah. a documentary on richard amsel's life um mm -hmm. it's worth uh checking out and he's got uh, you know he can talk yeah a lot yeah. a lot better than we can about his work but i just love this and i what i love about it it's got that you know the return of the great adventure but it is yeah. that serial and it's got all the main characters all yep, the main scenes characters. um yeah. it's yeah. it's wonderful and you know what? It's on my list too. Cause I remember when you and I talked about getting our three posters, I said, well, I know you're going to have one. We don't do a show called the Indie cast for 12 or 13 years mm. about Indiana Jones without you, you had to have oh, it as part right. of the yeah. deal. Yeah. But the reason why, I mean, I love this poster. This is the one I got from the star Wars fan club. I remember sending away $7 and 50 cents. I got two of them. This one I mounted. The other one still rolled upstairs. And that was the thing, too, about movie posters. It was hard to get the rolled ones. You wanted those without creases or folds in it because they look great. Because what would happen is the way they were printed, it's like almost like a clayish kind of ink. And if they cracked, when they folded it, you'd have that white line. And nothing would drive me crazier than you'd see this big white line down the center image or across because it would be folded up into fours. Yep. Uh, and a lot. I have some posters like... I have a lot of movie posters. Let's just say that before it was fashionable or it was easy to get to, there was a couple mail order companies here in the United States, besides the star Wars fan club, there was Jerry Allangers, which was based out of Brooklyn, New York. They had everything. They had movie posters. They had scripts. They would have these things called lobby cards. I don't know if you remember yes, lobby I've got, cards. I've got the Superman two ones. Yes. Those were 11 by 17 or 8 by 10. Sometimes the 8 by 10 is black and white. And the color ones were 11 by 17. And they would be photographs. Instead of movie posters, sometimes they would put photographs 
in a display case of an upcoming film yep. and it would have different scenes from that movie so you'd have like the hero the heroine and stuff like that so jerry allinger's i used to get so many yep that's one right there it would tell yep. you the title of the movie and they'd have a scene from the picture yeah i would yep. get so much of that movie memorabilia and then there was another place out in dearborn michigan called cinema city and these things were expensive. I don't know about how it was out there, but I remember as a kid saving up my money and it seems like nothing now, but it was like $25 or $30. And then what they did with movie posters is they'd have various, they'd have like the style A, which was the first poster. Yes. And then style B. And then we'll talk about one of the styles because it makes sense in a second. They, if a movie ran for six months, seven months or a year, they would constantly give you new artwork for the movie theaters because yep. the original yep. poster, if it was outside, the sun had faded it. It got old looking. So they'd come out with a new graphic or they'd reissue it. And that's what that Raiders poster is that we're talking about. This is not the one that came out in 1981. No. This is the reissue from, uh, from 1982. Yep. Yeah, they sent Raiders out again and they gave us that new poster. And the other thing, I don't know about you when it comes to that poster, the reason why I love that one so much is because it actually emotes how fun the movie is. Because you see Indiana Jones, that's not really in the film. He's not in the movie smiling as he's doing the whip. It's kind of a little wink, wink, nod, nod. But <laughs> it's so cool because in that one poster, you see the confident hero. He's got the whip above his head. He's got the swagger and stuff. It just screams, look how cool this guy is. Yeah. And then, like yeah. you said, you've got the Nazis on the corner. You've got the damsel in distress. You've got Karen Allen. Then you've got the Ark of the Covenant. Everything you need to know yeah. about Raiders Lost Ark is in that one freaking poster. I mean, the whole movie is right there. It's like you can look at that, and somehow you know what this two-hour adventure movie is going to be. Just and that's, that what a, that's what a good poster does. It, yeah, it, it just pulls you in and go, I want, to, yeah. I want to see this film. So, yeah. It's, it's a worthy, really cool. worthy addition. And that's that, like the poster that's behind me there. Um, you know, yeah. that's up in our living room um, of all things. So, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. it's uh, cause it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic poster and, and all, like all this work is. I think it's a better, I think in my opinion, it's a better poster than the original one, which granted is also a classic, but that one is so serious. That was almost scary. When I saw that in the theaters, when I was a kid, they had a giant cardboard display of that poster in the lobby. It was like seven feet by eight feet. It was a big cutout of Harrison Ford and all the, I wanted that so bad I bet, yeah. to have in my room. I'm like, can I own that? What, you know, I don't know where they are now, but it was so cool, but he's so dead serious. Hmm. That Indiana Jones picture. I mean, it's just like, no joke. You know, it's just like, I'm going to kill you. You know, that type of thing. <laughs> or that one again, just screams, this is a good time. So anyway, Raiders Lost Ark reissue. That's on both of our lists. So what's yes. your number two, Ed? My number two is a Star Wars poster. And uh, I'm surrounded by Star Wars posters. I've got, uh, I've got a pretty chunky uh, one behind me from the Star Wars trilogy. You know, just yeah. a photo and things like that. I've got Empire, Jedi. I've got two of the different styles here. But my, it's a nostalgic favorite of mine is um, the, uh, the Hildebrandt wow. Brothers Star Wars poster. Yeah. Um, Greg it was Tim Hildebrand. Yeah. It was made in 36 hours after yes. George Lucas thought the original by I think Tom Young was um, Tom Jones. Too, yeah, yeah, was too uh, too dark. Um, too dark. So yeah. so they created this, and I know it doesn't really look like Luke or Leia. Yeah, but yeah. There's something about it. I'll put it up so you can have a yeah, look yeah, at yeah, it on yeah, the big yeah. screen. But something about it just says. 1970s sci-fi and that's what yep. i just fell in love with you know that the, the, the position small, and everything yeah. it's amazing i was gonna say i have a smaller version of it around the corner signed by the two brothers too one oh of my them, gosh. Uh, tim passed away a couple years back but greg is still out there he's still making artwork in fact he's come to my terrific con last year he was there he and his wife delightful people i sat there i had a stack of of because he also does comic book covers too and i was yep. like could you sign these and He's like, yeah, sure. And he just, wonderful guy, great stories. We talked about everything. And then I learned a lot because, you know, I went to school for art and design, but he talks about how he uses the color purple a lot. If you go to look at a lot of his posters, he did a lot of Lord of the Rings graphics. He did some Star Wars books too, Shadows of the Empire. He and his brother, they always had this certain palette. 
and there's a lot of oranges, a lot of reds and, and magenta and purple and all that. But that Star Wars poster, yeah, Leia never looked like the one that you saw originally. You know, Carrie Fisher, that was like an Italian. It looked like Sophia Loren's body, and yep. it slapped on her face. And she was a little too voluptuous, and Luke was a little too beefcakey to be Mark Hamill. But, but I think know. what – if if you look at the original card, hang on. Yeah, up, yeah. There. there it is. Yeah, right there it is. Yep. Yep, right over there. So that is, I think, the um like the first um pass of the artwork by the Hildebrandt brothers. Yeah. Um, yeah. whereas the poster we sort of know is the 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 second take on it. I think that's sort of why it harkens back to why I why, why I love it so much is because I remember it from the figures. My um seventh or eighth I, probably my eighth birthday party that I had. Um, I've still got the invites, which had that artwork, you know, oh, really? invited to a Star Wars party. I'll dig them. Nice. Hang on a second. Actually. Oh, he's going to go find it. Oh, This is vintage Ed Dollister so, birthday party stuff. So there's um, a card. There's the, um, yeah, look the, at that. Uh, the, was the table it a tablecloth. Cloth. Yeah. And there's a card. And you can Oh, yeah, see there it is. That's it. That's it. Yep. There we go. So, and that was, uh, I'm going to say, was that on the record album? The soundtrack? It was no, that something. was just the title. That was just, um, no, but I know that poster. I bought that poster in a record store. Okay. It didn't have the titles and the graphics as the movie poster, but they did sell that separately. I, I just, I just love it. It just, you know, says everything. It's on the Art of Star Wars book. Ah. That's over there. It's a Star Wars book. It's called The Art of Star Wars. I believe it has the script in it or it just has some of the pre-production stuff. But that's the cover. It has that graphic. So I knew that. But all right. What's, so, what's, your, what's your second one? Well, amazingly, it's Star Wars because long before Indiana Jones, Star Wars was it. I mean, yep. that was, you know, my 77, the whole world changed. I used to just go to a movie. If your mom or dad wants to take you to a movie, you're like, yeah, all right. And, King Kong was cool and yeah. we saw that in the theaters and, you know, but it, it was just a movie. You, you'd see another one like Disney would have stuff, but you never really thought much about it mm -hmm. after you saw it. Then 77 comes along and then you said Star Wars. Now my favorite, I'm going to move baby Yoda out of the way. <laughs> Goodbye, baby Yoda. Our ratings, our ratings are going down now. Quick, put him back. No, no, put him wait, back. wait, wait. The ratings are going back up now. <laughs> baby Yoda's in the scene. It's this one here. And again, this one here and it's a weird thing that we talked about drew struzan because he plays a part in some of this too and i don't want to drive everybody crazy maybe put a graphic above it but yep. this one hangs here in the mitch cave and that is what they call the circus poster yes of star wars and if you can see that there what it's designed to look like is if you were in a galaxy far far away this would be a poster that's hanging on the wall because you can see there's a a torn Obi-Wan Kenobi poster yes. hanging there, maybe like a wanted poster. And the, they actually drew in wrinkles and like stains on the actual image as if it was up there and it's been weathered and, you know, weather beaten. And then you got Luke and you got, now that looks like Mark Hamill. That looks like Carrie Fisher. Yes. Those are good reference photos. There's Harrison Ford. They threw him in there. The droids are in there. We've got Vader. Everything you could possibly want. We've got chewy stuff. I mean, literally... Just like the Raiders poster that I yep. like so much, this is called the circus style poster because it's supposed to look like when the circus came to town and that's what it was. But that's my second favorite poster of all time. And it's a lot like what you were talking about because it's got purples. It's got a certain palette to it. It doesn't yep. change a lot. It's got blue, purple, and a little gold and yellow. And that's about it. And it just keeps the composition together. It's not even the traditional Star Wars logo. You know, no, it's not I, the type that we know either. And it just, it again, just like that post, you see this, it looks like it's going to be a fun ride. It looks like oh, I yeah. want to go see that. It's They're swinging on a rope. They've got blasters going. They've got space. They've got, it's amazing. This graphic here, not to say that the other Star Wars posters aren't fantastic, but that one to me is like the epitome of, a cool Star Wars poster. Well, to me, to me, it looks like uh, the uh, from the nine Errol Flynn films from the nineteen thirties with a yeah, little it does. And it, it evokes. Well, it looks like of, a serial. That's yeah. what uh, Star Wars was supposed to be, like a Flash yeah. Gordon serial, and this kind of gives that feel, like 
something you'd see in the 40s in a movie lobby somewhere you know not not to be confused with batman cereal no by the way if we did get our 2000 people oh it's gone up to 2000 now has it it was originally oh i'm what? sorry is it a thousand well having second thoughts want, second thoughts not that i don't want to kick uh commit gastronic suicide by eating 1989 batman cereal but i made a promise if you people if we subscribe yeah uncle mitchy eats this cereal anyway that's All right. Culture, that's a good. That's a good two. choice. We got so far. We got two Raiders and two Star Wars. Come on, yeah. Ed, we got to change it up a little okay. bit. My third one is uh, one that I only recently got, maybe three or four years ago. Um, there's different. We were talking about uh, different poster styles, and I know that Chris yeah. A from the IndyCast was talking about the you know the giant quad uh, posters um, that yeah. they have in the UK. Yeah. I've actually yeah. got. Oh, I don't have it here. Oh, maybe I do. You can uh, see in the background here, see that giant poster? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's like a so bus that stop poster. is yeah. a French, it's French? Yep, yep. Okay, and that was, that would have been posted on the side of a, um, you know, under a the bridge bus. or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's all different sizes of posters. Um, in Australia, we have a thing called the Australian Day Bill. And this here is an example of a classic. Oh, God. Would that be the Gene Kelly, Olivia Newton John? It would be roller skating movie. It would be, but I'm. This is not my. This is not my favorite poster. I'm just illustrating. Yeah, that, no, they're they're long and skinny. I think they're yeah. like eleven inches by thirty six or so, or whatever. Yep. Um. So anyway. Um, yeah. And I had the. I actually had the um, Richard Amsel Raiders first one of that, which I has still got in my study out the back, which has been yep. eaten sadly by moths. It's, you know, oh. um, because it's just, it's, it looks like a, it looks like a relic from an Indiana Jones adventure, but my mm. favorite um, day bell day bill is the Superman, the movie poster. I've got it up here. I can't take it off my wall because it's a bit hard, but I'll put a graphic up. It's the right. one with uh, basically Superman in almost 3d flying up above Metropolis. And you've got a picture uh. of, Marlon Brando and you've got a picture of Gene Hackman in it and it just says NRC this is the Australian version of it I've, I've I found a I don't framed, think I've seen that yeah so yeah I've, is, I've picked up a framed copy of it um in uh actually in a mar in a market I was looking and I go oh my gosh I have to buy this regardless of how much it costs and it actually wasn't it was quite reasonable I was and gonna I was say just, the star the superman one that we had here because i have a, a reproduction of it somewhere not hanging up was just the crest the superman the shield the s in the clouds with kind of like a reddish yellow thing coming out do something said, here that blue, i don't, blue, don't normally do fly. but no it's not that it's not, not that, that one. one and this is the one i'm talking about there can you see it on the side there yeah, it's right in the middle of the uh, between Star Wars and Superman. That's the poster. I've never seen that before. That's um, that's a Mylar poster. So let me just. Uh, oh no, not the, the not the big S one. I'm talking about the one you show there with Superman flying out towards it. That's the one you 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 said you like. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, no, I've never seen that here. That's not a United States release. Well, now, the Superman poster itself was a Mylar. That was were really hard to come by. I, well, I did manage, to, I did manage to, yeah, I did manage to get one of those. Um, and I don't think that was a, I've got a feeling the one that I got was essentially a, like one that you could buy from a shop or something like that. Yeah. Like yeah, a, yeah. A movie version, but I do have that one next to it because I love, uh, um, I'll take a, a proper photo of that and put that up as well. But uh, I don't know. It's just something about it. And actually that Superman logo uh, yes. was really the first poster, I think, when you think of superhero um, movie posters of the day today, right. um, you know, they often bring out, you know, the logo, um, you know, it's Cap yeah. Captain Shield or it's, you know, the Bat logo or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, you know, that was a precursor. Again, Superman, the movie, it was the, it's the, the granddaddy of all superhero movies. Everybody knew what that S was. Yeah, but yes. you're right. Yes. That's all you saw in the picture. That, that, I don't think I ever saw a graphic with Superman on until Superman 2. Okay. Yes. All the original Superman posters were all just the, the yes, just, just variations of the yes. Like, you know, it said the tagline was you'll believe a man can fly. Yes. Christmas yes. 1978. That was it. That's all we saw. 
or so. Superman 2, The Adventure Continues, 1980. 1981. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> uh, now, the third one is I realized I sent you a graphic, and I don't know why, but I, was, I had two Raiders. Actually, I like all the Raiders Lost Ark posters, but the Italian one, which is the size I had it when I was a kid hanging up, but I've never been able to do it before. It is about four feet wide by eight feet long. And it's not called a quad. That's a British type of thing. But yes. this is, this is something that would be on the side of a building. It's in the paper is so thin. It's, it's easily torn. And yeah. uh, I got it from I Italy when I was over in Europe and the name of Raiders over there was, I'm going to say it right. Il Predatori della Arca, the, the Predators of the Ark della Lost. It's the, the Ark that is lost. I can't remember right now, but it was that was the thing. And the only reason why I thought it was really cool, and again, it's I'm going to say it's Drew Struzan, not Richard Amsell. Mm -hmm. It's, a, again, a bluish-purple color, but there's Harrison Ford standing there with his whip, but Karen Allen was in it. And, you know, Karen Allen, I just – Animal House, East of Eden, Raiders Lost Ark. I, she was my heartthrob. That was like it. When I met her, I met her twice. It's kind of like, hi, how are you? you, you you're, my, you're my heartthrob as a kid. I had such a crush on Karen Allen. Uh, the restraining order is still in place. She lives right up near me in Massachusetts. But she's such a delight. But she was on that poster, and she looks so damn sexy. She's standing behind Harrison Ford and got her arms on her hips, and she's got the outfit she was wearing inside the, uh, the Raven bar. But that was also there. But that's not the one I picked for the third one. Okay. My greatest poster, and it's hanging up underneath one of these, but I didn't want to take it down off the wall. It's the Rocketeer. Yep. It's the Rocketeer poster. Again, it's a Disney movie. It came out in 1991. It was based on a comic book. I love the comic book. I love the artwork. It was all set in the 30s. But the poster, and we show a picture of it, it's got this Art Deco 30s style of the rocketeer flying up into the air and it, it looks like something you would see if you were in the thirties and walk around Manhattan yes. and you went to the empire state building or something. It's just a great poster. It's very simple. It just says the rocketeer in June, uh, 1991. And that's it. That's, that's all. There's no graphics. There's no words. There's no titles. There's no actors names. It's just that image with the name and the date. And, uh, the movie didn't do so well. I no, mean, it it's a, it's a, and I was just yeah. thinking that back because that poster that you've chosen is yeah beautifully done. And I do yeah. remember the poster that came after that, which was just the photos of Billy Campbell and um, all those. And it had the Rocketeer in yellow done like a Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a shame that film didn't do. I, I, I remember seeing it going, this is, this is great. This is like a, a companion piece to an indie film. It does. Know, it does. You know? They could be on a double bill, the Nazi yep. fight in action, you know, yes. Saturday matinee. But I think it didn't do well because I do believe that graphic probably worked against it because nobody knows what a rocketeer is. Yeah. You see that image, you think it might be a robot. It could, it doesn't tell you it's set in the thirties. It doesn't tell you it's fighting the Nazis or any of that stuff. It really doesn't tell you anything about the movie. Mm -hmm. So I think that didn't help the marketing of it. And that's probably, I'm not going to say that's why it did bad, but I, it, I'll send next time we we're together, I'll show you this. I actually liked the movie. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I can't think of it. Timothy Dalton is the yes. bad guy. He was just oh, coming yes. off of the James ne Bond movies. Uh, Neville Sinclair, I believe. Neville Sinclair. Yeah. yeah. Jennifer yeah. Connelly, forget Karen Allen. Once I saw Jennifer Connelly, <laughs> that was my new love. Uh, Billy Campbell, Alan Arkin, uh, Paul Servino. Uh, th there's such a great cast in there. Terry O'Neill as Howard Hughes. It's a great movie, but it didn't do well. And I remember being it, it's directed by Joe Johnston, who worked on the Raiders movies, who made Captain America and a bunch of other movies. And it just didn't do well. And I was so mad about it because I love the comic so much. I actually wrote a letter when you could write letters back in the day. And I don't know what I was thinking of. Jeffrey Katzenberger. Before he became part of uh, DreamWorks with Spielberg and Geffen, I wrote him a letter. I was at my office, should have been working, but I just typed a letter on my computer, said, Dear uh, Jeffrey, I saw the film. Here's what went wrong with the movie. And I don't know why I did. I just, an early critic, 
I told them this fell flat and the music wasn't good here. And this should have been the scene where the whole audience was applauding, but it just like a rock. It didn't work. And here's why. And I just literally, for some reason, told them why I thought the movie didn't do well. Who the hell am I? A month later, I still have the letter. It comes on Disney stationery because at the time he was in charge of uh, Walt Disney from the desk of Jeffrey Katzenberg. And he answered my letter point for point. He said, oh, you talked about Timothy Dalton. Here's what I think about this. You talked about the music not working in this scene. Here's why I think this. He actually responded. So I'm thinking who has less or more free time on their hands, <laughs> me for writing the letter or the head of Disney Studios for taking the time and writing me back. And he went point for point. It's a two or three page letter. He explained why he thought the movie was a success and why I didn't agree or he didn't agree with my view. And it's signed at the end, Jeffrey Katzenberg, and it's an official stationery. So I was like, wow, he must think what a jerk this guy is to write to me. I kind of felt bad that he, he took the time out to write to me, but uh, it's, it's, it's weird. It's one of those things that I actually, you know, have in my box of autographs. That's pretty cool. But that's good that he, you know, he obviously was quite passionate about it. You're passionate about it. And yeah. if you haven't watched it, it's on Disney Plus in Oh, it is, um, yeah. There's HD. actually a new cartoon. There's a sequel to it. I heard that with a, a girl, um, a rocketeer who I don't, I don't know the details. It's about. like the granddaughter of the yeah. rocketeer, and, and Billy Campbell does the voice of uh, Cliff Secord. He's the that's the pretty older cool. Villain. It is. I mean, but it's not the sequel that I was hoping for. I was always hoping that they were going to do one of the fifties, uh -huh. and it was going to be with the communists and the you know race to the moon and all that type of stuff. And somehow somebody finds the rocket pack, and they, he comes out of retirement and. Don't give them, them out, don't so. quick, right, right to, uh, right to Bob Iger. He's back in the chair again, I think. So you can, well, uh, you know, who was going to do it of all people, Thomas Jane, the actor, he's a oh, huge yes. rock and he's, fan. He's the Punisher, wasn't he? He's the Punisher in one movie. He's also yeah. Mickey Mantle. He's been in a lot of movies. Uh, I can he's see him with rock. Aaron Eckhart all the time. They do look alike. Yeah. yeah. But he's a huge Rocketeer fan. And I heard that he was also trying to get a sequel off the ground to be in the movie let's get him so, on the show we should we should have a chat to him i met him at a comic con in boston about seven years ago oh, he's a, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an interesting character maybe i'll get him to my show one day there you go but anyway that's that's my poster rocketeer star wars and uh indiana jones i mean and there's a lot more i even got the blues brothers behind me but I well i'll quickly shall we quickly i'll quickly do my top that's uh, my runner my, up my three Not runners up that's your oh, up. A, not a great graphic, but this is kind of the start of the photo stuff we talked about. Yeah. Where you just see the, the actors and all it says is they'll never get caught. They're on a mission from God. And the and Carrie Fisher's in this too. The yep. reason why this is up there is I wanted this poster, but I didn't have the money for it. So I wrote to the uh, poster company and I said, how much is it? Do you have this Blues Brothers poster? And they wrote back to me. They said, it's like $30. And this is 1980 and $30 was like $500. <laughs> so I didn't have it. And it just showed up like four or five months later. And I don't know if my dad bought it. And to this day, I, I never know the true origin or yeah. my mom did. It just showed up. It was folded and I opened it up and there was the Blues Brothers poster. And I'm like, did they get confused at the place? Did they think yeah. I had ordered it or, or did my mom and dad send a check and buy it for me? No one's ever confessed where it came from, but this, I, I own it. I just don't know how I got it. That's all. It was a miracle. It was a miracle from on God. High. That's yeah, right. A, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's my other runner up. But go well, ahead. I've What's got your... I've got three runners ups. I've got my Dell Nichols. My well, yeah, my Dell Nichols posters are below um, from the uh, giveaways. They were you yeah, know at yeah. the. Um, at Those the are kind of tie-ins, though. Those aren't really. You're skirting the edge there. They're not movie posters, Ed. Well. Okay. Not one all right, sheet. all right, all right. Um, my other one that's in our living room is the Saturday Night Fever poster, which again oh, is a photo. Yep. And again, you know, what do you do when the record is over? It pretty much tells the story of the entire film, and it's just uh, such with the a disco striking, ball. Yep, yeah, such a striking image. And the last one is the Tom Chantrell um, Star Wars poster with them all. You know. You know that one. That was the one where they're all running out at you? It's pretty much like that, yeah. Which that's that's looking that was a reissue in poster. front of me, yeah. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think that was maybe style C. It's it got the white be. edges to it. Yeah. 
it's a, I've got it's that a one. lot like this. Yeah, they yes. all have their guns, Han and Luke and Leia. They're all coming yep. out at you. So I'll put up a right. photo of each of those. And I do have, I mean, I've got others. My head Another always, one? Come always, on. Man. I know. All right, you're going to keep it. I'm going to start throwing mine out too. But always. Have, what's the other one? I had, uh, well, one I had a beautiful, it was the dark blue Empire Strikes Back poster, not the um, Gone with the, one with the Wind style. One. Uh, I'm Were they to... kissing each other? That one? Um, I think so, yeah. And Luke was, you know, looking, pointing. He was not front and center really but he's on the he, tauntaun off to the side no nah, he was he was pointing his um blaster at at you i'll find it and the other one which i've got which is sadly wrecked a little bit uh, you know I what i think you're, go back i think you're uh, was there a picture of luke standing on his head too oh maybe i'll have because to, there was a coca-cola a Coca-Cola giveaway, just like your posters back there by Boris. Boris Vigello? Vigello, yeah. Vallejo, whatever. Yes, yep. that yep. was one. I remember my grandfather was working there. He had retired, and he had a part-time job at the movie theater. And the, he got me that poster. That hung above my bed for a, in 1980 because the artwork was so beautiful on that. Let me so. see if I can find it here. I've got a photo. I don't just usually leave photos of myself lying around. That's, that's what... Uh, Oh no, I don't have it here, but I'll show you this picture. This is me in my room, and you can see. There's uh, Indiana Jones. There's yeah, Indiana, yeah I had yeah. those posters. Yeah, I've got Ewok's Caravan of Courage. I have that too. Don't laugh. Yeah. I have both of them. The Ewok yeah. Adventure. And that. Yeah. Thank you, Star Wars yeah. fan club. I will. Uh, I will scan that in, and I'll put a, a proper picture up of that. But the other one was I had the poster of. Um, the Star Wars triple bill for the first time. Oh, yes. The, the English one? Uh, I assume it's, it's, it's basically just, I think it's silver. It's got red title at the top, you know, back for the, for the first time in cinemas yeah. or whatever. And but it's, it's got, got, all, writing. Three it's got right, the, yeah. all, th all three films and it's got a picture of uh, Darth Vader. Yeah. But is but it rectangular? It's is huge. It yeah. Yeah. It's a rectangle. Yeah. But it's not, it's not this shape. It's, if you turn it on its side, right? Uh, no, it's, I'll have to, I'll have Is to Is it by it. Thomas Noble, that artist? It could be. Okay. Unfortunately, okay. Uh, because I had pinned it in and it's, it's yeah, yeah, all yeah, torn yeah, yeah. and everything, but that's a, that's a favorite of mine. So no, it might be the one, if it's the one I'm thinking of, I have that one as a, it's a reprint. It's not the real deal. And I took that with me to conventions when I was younger. And I got that signed by Peter Mayhew, Chewbacca, Warwick Davis, uh, Wicket, Kenny Baker, mm -hmm. Dave Prowse, Jeremy Bullock. I was taking that around to shows and That's I was getting fantastic. all their signatures on it. Yeah. But the thing of it is, it was such a, to carry that to a convention is a pain because you got to keep it in the tube and you got to take it out and they got to sign it. And they're going to roll it back up. And eventually is is cool an idea and i admire those people that have those autograph posters where they have yes. every single cast member what a project that must be mm. to take that around from show to show to show to show so yeah anyway that's 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 not on my list but it's a good one there well, Boy, that's, Ed. that's pretty much it for yeah, our, it really is. our yeah. look back at movie posters what i would recommend you also do is um do a google search look up you know paul shipper drew struzan Mark Ratz uh, is Robert oh. Moore um, is a fantastic. Uh, uh, there's so um, Joe oh, Caroni. Joe, I mean, the Joe um, Caroni was this thing of Matt Bush, who is a great yes, artist. You did a there lot are of so many um, amazing, you know, artists out there, and um, it's a shame that we don't see more of these movie posters done in that art style. But who knows? Maybe. No, but you know what? There's a lot of uh, offshoots like Mondo prints. I don't know if that happens down there. And then I've there's seen those, one, yep. a bottle, is it bottle cap galleries, bottleneck galleries? There's a lot of smaller galleries that do limited edition runs of classic movies, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, like Jaws, Close Encounters, Star Wars. I mean, there's so many beautiful Star Wars. Yeah, right there. There's so many beautiful Star Wars posters. We didn't even talk about the Star Trek posters by Bob oh, no. Peake. He used to do great pictures as well, great imagery. Uh, well, how, there's a there's a whole nother episode how are we going oh my gosh we're almost oh, we're way over again oh, well, my we gosh. tried we tried people we said we're going to keep it short and to the point but do we have so much fun doing this stuff that's we why do. we do the we show do. and we appreciate you 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 know watching and uh 
and enjoying and you know getting in the conversation remember send, your, you send have, your stuff over yeah, yeah i mean you no know, i don't know if they can include graphics on the comments or i don't think they email. can but certainly talk um you know talk the facebook to page yeah what's your favorite uh what's your favorite movie poster um do you agree with us are we totally yeah. way off base they're probably saying how could you not include this or how could you not include that well well i know subtly some people think the godfather is a classic movie poster and all it is is if you look at it, it's a marionette graphic in the title. Yep. Because it's he's a, you know the master manipulator. He controls everything. And I I believe the poster was a shot of Marlon Brando. It's just his hands petting a cat. It, well, it's, I think graphic? just I'll put it up, but I think it's just a, it's just it's the word like photo of him. Yeah. Yeah, and I never thought that was a great. I personally, I don't think that's a great poster. I was like. Okay, what, what am I supposed to get? The Shining is another one people like, the poster. Mm -hmm. It's just really words on it. And then they've yep. got that, here's Johnny graphic. Watch it. Your, your Star Wars is moving. I around know, it's moving. It's, it's on my elbow. Uh, now, again, it's just per, it's a matter of taste. Yeah. All the stuff is your opinion and matter of taste. We're no experts on this stuff, too. But there are so many more Back to the Future posters. Most of them are all Drew Struzan posters. So. Yeah, they are. That goes to tell you something. I'm surprised you didn't pick the Muppets. You love the Muppets. Well, I do. And Amzel love did the Great Muppet Caper, didn't he? Or Muppets Take Manhattan? He did. He did the Muppet movie. I thought, didn't? Oh, he? was that the one yeah, in the seventies? Yeah. So. Um, I can't believe you didn't pick that. Well, I suppose because I love it, and I've got my, you know, my you got Kermit right there. It's yeah, like I do. I've got, I've got Kermit here, but um. Oh, I've got his illegitimate child over here. <laughs> oh, there, there they go. The numbers the are going ratings up. are going up, up again. Up. Baby Yoda's on the show. Yeah. I think uh, I think that's what we should have you dressed as in the next episode, whatever that will be. So it might be. All so, right. Okay, well, so that's it. That's all we have right now. That's right? it. So yeah. again, thank you for uh, listening and watching the show. Uh, if you like the show, please tell your friends. Um, you know, let them know. Share. Spread the word. What does uh, Joe Stuber usually share the love? Doesn't he? No, share, say, share the lair, but we don't have lair. a lair. That, that's we okay. have an excellent adventure. If they want to jump on board our excellent, it's no bogus trip. We'll that's tell you right. That. No bogus journey. That's right. That's Did right. the lawyers call yet? Are they on the phone yet? <laughs> have we got the cease and desist That's yet? all right, but we might have to face the music. Is that what their next one is? Bill and Ted? No, no that, that was, was that movie with Bruce Jenner, wasn't it? No, that's can't stop the music. There's another great movie. Oh, poster. well, that's, you know, right there. Ice, and then there's the Flash Gordon movie posters. I've got one around the corner signed by Sam Jones. Thanks to you. Um, I, that is, again, we, we could go on and we usually do, but that's all right. So that's by Alex Ross. He's another great painter. Oh, he is. He's fantastic. Yes, he is. There's Tom, so many. We, we anyway. have to turn this off. People have to go watch other YouTube videos. I know. They should There's go watch our other episodes. Please if they do. Haven't done Please it already. do. This is the third one in the can. I know most people probably think that's where it should belong. This cereal's not going to eat itself, kids. Okay. <laughs> it might. It might just eat itself. You never know. <laughs> I think it's, it might come to life. You know. That's right. So just like that razor stubble. Anyway, I'm Ed Dollister. I'm Mitch Halleck. And you've been watching Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventures. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.